Jesse, the recording company loves our video. They want to see us perform live. Yeah, it's all set. The producer's coming to the max tomorrow night to see you guys sing. Hey, that's great. Yeah, we rehearsed tonight. Oh, I can't tonight. I have to study. Tomorrow's the midterm. Jesse, hey, I'll sit next to you and you can copy off of me. I may as well take poison now. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know about my study group. Oh, don't be a fuddy-duddy. I'll be your study buddy. I'm about to embark on one of the great challenges of my scientific career. This work right here is going to change history. I think this is going to be our greatest mission. I don't have time to study. I'll never get into Stanford. I got big plans for you tonight. I got maps. I got charts. I'm going to see you through this because my credibility is on the line. It's at this point that you'll want to start taking notes. Welcome to the Sitcom Study, the podcast where we contemplate the TV shows we grew up with and search for the truth and wisdom within the tropes and cliches. And we've got a different kind of episode tonight. Amy, what are we doing? Well, today we are mixtaping our Say by the Bell episodes. Yep. This is one of our mixtapes. This is our version of a clip show. Uh, We're taking a week off from doing a new podcast, and we're mushing together the handful of times that we've talked about a single show, in this case, Saved by the Bell. So we're pulling clips from past podcasts. What are the episodes in which we covered Saved by the Bell? All right. We are re-listening to... Our episode, Party When the Parents Are Away, from Saved by the Bell, that episode was called House Party. It's from season two. We're going to revisit our Let's Start a Business episode, and that's the Saved by the Bell episode, season four, episode three, Screech's Spaghetti Sauce. And of course, Hooked on Pills, where we get to revisit Jessie's amazing performance. She's just so, so scared, Jay. And finally, our going to college episode, and this is Saved by the Bell, the college years, Zach Lies and Videotape. Yep, but if it's a mixtape, it means we've got to do a trivia quiz, right? Oh, well, and there is no trivia quiz about Saved by the Bell that Jay can't ace. Well, that is my hope. I used to boast that I could look at any given episode of Saved by the Bell, just the first like frame of it, just the establishing hallway shot, and immediately know what episode it was. Like I had seen them all so frequently after school that I just had this like subliminal understanding. Did you have ones that were your favorites that you like taped off TV and rewatched? There was or? no need to tape well, them. Well, no, because they were just always on. Yeah, but there I was mean, like, like three different channels. What were your favorites? The one, uh, the murder mystery episode where they all go to a mansion. Oh, yeah. Um, and they meet and they Mr. Jameson. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's like, it's a murder mystery thing. And then there's the point where it's like, but wait a minute, that wasn't supposed to happen. The murder mystery is real. Um, <laughs> I always like that one. The one where they get, uh, where they spend the night in the mall. I guess I like the ones where they kind of switched get it out up. Of the and school. Yeah, like went to different places. And I also just liked... The ones when they were older, I think, uh, when they weren't like little kids. Not the good morning Miss Bliss years. Yeah. But so, yeah, let's see. I I think I'm going to do well. I think you're going to do great. Pride go with before a fall. It's multiple choice. So I'm not going to give you the choices. I'm going to see what you can do without them. All right. Are you ready? Yes. All right. In which U.S. state was good morning Miss Bliss set? Indianapolis. Except that's, that's not, not a state. A state? But the, the state in which Indianapolis <laughs> is. That would be Indiana. Yeah. Which celebrity radio DJ made a cameo? Casey Kasem. If Jeez it's a celebrity Louise. DJ, Casey Kasem appeared like five times. On Save by the <laughs> not Dick Clark? All right. The show's anti-marijuana PSA ends uh-huh. with the cast and NBC president Brandon Tartikoff declaring... There's no hope in dope. <laughs> There's no hope with dope. Good job. (laughs) An argument over which two opposing interests leads Jesse and Slater to break up. Opposing interests? Yes. Um, Well, I I guess I'm going to need the clues. The choices are ballet versus football, tofu versus steak, vests versus zubas, and sitting in chairs properly versus sitting in chairs backwards. That's funny. Um, I guess it's the first one. Uh, that's what I would think. That's where I was trying yeah. to lead you. Um, but 
Slater is a dancer in some episodes. Oh, that's true. That's true. But the the chair thing is sort of true, but I think it's a joke. So I think it's I think it's the first football ballet. That's what I would think. That's correct. Yeah. What did Lisa's parents do for a living? Uh, they were doctors. That's correct. What is the name of the girl group Lisa Kelly and Jesse form in the caffeine pill episode? The is it the banana split? No, hot Sunday. Hot Sunday. That's right. Banana split wasn't <laughs> was a choice. Which of the following did Mister Belding once call Zach? My son, the son I never had, the son I always wanted, the son of a bitch. The son I never had when he was hypnotized with the <laughs> subliminal tape recording. Nice. Yes. What did Slater crash into while driving the driver's ed car, injuring Kelly's head in the process? He just like drove into the wall. Like there's like a pillar maybe or something. It's just they're inside. They're, they're inside. Okay. So the inside options are lockers, nerds, yeah, chalkboard, lockers. or vending machines. Lockers. Okay. Um, what game show, number 10, what game show did Mr. Dewey once audition for? Oh, I don't think I remember this. The Price is Right? Um, that's not an option. You've got American Gladiators, Pressure, Luck, Jeopardy, or the $10,000 Pyramid. I'm just guessing that the, the $10,000 Pyramid. That's incorrect. Okay. I don't know how to get to the correct answer, though. That was 10. Okay. Let's get into our first segment here. So this is from our third episode ever. This is our podcast about parties when the parents are away. So this had a Family Matters thing. This had a Wonder Years thing. This is all the episodes where, yeah, the kids throw a party when the parents are out of town. And this is all about uh, season two, episode five of Saved by the Bell. This is where they have the party at Screech's house. Here it is. Okay, so that brings us to Saved by the Bell. So this episode of Saved by the Bell um, actually happens basically within the same year as the uh, as the Family Matters episode. The Family Matters episode is from February second, nineteen ninety, and the Saved by the Bell episode House Party is from October sixth, nineteen ninety. Yes, so equally ridiculous, but different, uh, a completely different vibe. Within seconds of this starting, it's it's just so clear, like, oh, right, Saved by the Bell is on its own wavelength. Uh, you know, it, it was made for Saturday mornings. This was not, if, if Family Matters and Full House were more like, this is a show for the whole family, Saved by the Bell is like, no, this is just for kids. This is, this is going to be unbearable to anyone over the age of 12. <laughs> you know, the whole tone of the show is like, like a Bugs Bunny cartoon, yes, right? Just so ridiculous. dopey. Uh, so, so who's who's got the parents leaving this time? So this time, Screech's parents are going out of town. His um, mom, right? Because we never even really meet his dad. Right. Dad, um, we hear about dad being in the car and we hear a horn honking and Screech is like, mom, dad's going crazy. Let's go. And then she takes 20 more minutes to say goodbye. <laughs> well, this mom is such a bizarre creation first of all i think if i'm not mistaken i think this lady comes back maybe in one of the like tv movies they did down the road oh. but this is basically her only i was appearance. gonna say yeah the internet says this is her only appearance yeah you don't get a lot of screech's mom or screech's house or anything uh in the series That's so parents really no it's it's they're famously inconsistent with that there will be mm -hmm. an episode all about zach's dad and you don't get anything about his mom. And then a couple years later, you'll get an episode with his mom and they don't acknowledge his dad's. It's, it's all over the place. But they decide now is our chance to give Screech a mom. What's she going to be like? This character is completely incoherent to me because she's um, obsessed with Elvis. Yeah. She's They're wacky, going to Graceland for their anniversary. Right, that's her thing. She's into Elvis. Everything is about Elvis. Their whole house is like a shrine to Elvis. Keep in mind, Screech, he's got a lot of eccentricities that we've found out about so far over the course of Saved by the Bell. There has never been a mention that he comes from a household that is devoted to Elvis. Well, right? Elvis likes to face the kitchen so that he can watch the mom cooking. That's yeah. so, what he likes. 
Uh, the mom is like this wacky free spirit and she's sort of characterized in this very kind of flighty, like, uh, you know, just, just sort of wackadoo way. And yet at the same time, she's like, oh, before I go, here's a list of hundreds of rules. A hundred and some 37. Well, there's at least 137 because that's, he breaks rule number 137. Yeah. So I, this made no sense to me. Uh, and that, that's kind of what I mean by the, like, like it's as though it was written by children. Wait a minute. You're saying a person can't be free-spirited and also have rules for their kids? Oh, in real life, of course, they can be. But somehow, to me, that contradiction didn't strike me as, oh, she's just a nuanced and very well-thought-out character, and that's why she has these different sides. I just thought she was silly. Yes, silly. She's silly, and she is, like, but she's silly like um, like an obsessed mom. She's like, oh, my little Sam. You will. I love you so much. Kiss, kiss, kiss. And don't you make sure, make sure, make, you know, make sure you take care of my Elvis. He's got. They've got this Elvis statue that she's obsessed with, and then their dog's named Hound Dog. And yeah. so, yeah, you know, he's got to watch the dog. He's got to make sure not to break this statue. And uh, then she leaves. Yeah. And so this is a little bit different because we don't go right to party, right? What no. we have first is just the boy, his his male friends coming over, right. which is fine, right? Unlike the Winslow household, Screech is, is allowed to have a few friends over and they go full risky business. Yes. Only boys. Like no girls is one of the – no parties and no girls. Right. But this is Saved by the Bell, so – uh, they the uh, everyone's go to like good time idea is surveillance, right? Is spying on your friends of the opposite. Let's go see sex. what the boys are doing at Screech's house while his parents are away, and they were risky businessing. Yeah. So yeah, we we get the the stay. You know, they're they're dressed up in goofy sunglasses and whatnot. This this is Screech, Zach, and Slater. Right. Are all goofing around in Screech's house. You know, they've got music on, they're they're playing the guitar on the broomstick and whatnot. But the girls, and mind you, this is the this normal is cast of girls. This is such a funny shot. Oh, yeah, because we've been introduced to Tori Spelling. Right. Violet Bickerstaff, who's a recurring character. This is Screech's nerdy girlfriend. But this at this point, not Screech's nerdy girlfriend. This is her first appearance. And so she just is a nerdy girl who's dating this other nerdy guy. Completely Who's a ridiculous total dick. Character. Yeah. So, so just to back up for a second, we've got, you know, the, the normal... Normal cast, right? Like we said, Zach, Slater, and Screech. And then we have the girls, um, Kelly, Jesse, and Lisa. And then we have sort of off to the side uh, that, that we're sort of observing during in their school day. We have Violet Bickerstaff, the nerdy sort of mild-mannered girl, and Maxwell Nerdstrom, who is her boyfriend. He's a nerd, but Unlike Screech, who is a dopey, lovable, like, suspenders-wearing nerd, this guy is a rich tycoon nerd. Nerd, right. We find out he's the richest guy in school, and he's kind of a dick. Like, not kind of. He's a straight-up oh, dick. He's utterly he's like misogynist. He's, snapping at, um, like, snapping his fingers at Tori Spelling and being like, Violet, here. He says, he says... I forget what he says. He says. I don't want you hanging out with any hunk but me. He's a, a weasel times 7,000. He's gross. And Violet is just the sweet girl who really thinks that, you know, Samuel or Screech is so cute and wants right. to talk and to not him. Only, not only does she personally think he's cute, she is under the impression that he is like – the Mac Daddy of Bayside, because she says, "Oh, Samuel Powers could get any girl he wants," yeah, and the other girls—he is a nerd, but he hangs out with the cool kids. But so interestingly, she breaks up with Maxwell off camera. Right, right. We get one scene where we establish she's got this horrible boyfriend. The next scene, uh, she's she's kicked him to the curb, and she's joined our our girls, our regular cast group, Kelly and Lisa and Jesse. Yeah, the girls say, "Let's help." Violet, and then they like you know again off camera somehow like build her up. She goes and breaks up with him. They were gonna go to the movies, but then they say let's go spy on the boys. Right. It'll be more fun to spy on the boys, and so uh, so that catches up to yeah a risky business scene where the boys are goofing around in the house, and then the girls they're not spying 
through the window or something. No. They are all in the house. They're in the kitchen. They're yeah. standing in the kitchen door watching the boys who are in the living room. And we have these two like reversal shots that are looking back at these girls, just like standing and pointing and like laughing as though the guys wouldn't see them literally in the next room. It's so weird. Yeah, it's, it's like absurd. such a weird shot. But so the girls laugh at the boys. The jig is up. Ha ha. We've been here the whole time. We've been watching you. How much of that did you see? Yeah. (laughs) But here's the thing. That's not even the party. So no. now we've got the whole cast That's plus Violet party. in Screech's house. Right. That would still be fine, right? Well, not according to the rules. That's why Screech is upset because he's like, we've already broken rule number 136. We have girls in the house. Okay. So they've broken the rule about girls, mm-hmm. but it's still not a party. But yeah. then through some just sort of miscellaneous hijinks. They were right? dancing. They're being okay. silly and dancing. Oh, right. The girls were dancing, making fun of the boys. Right. Right. They were doing their impression. This is you. This is you. Right. And then Jesse takes uh, Violet by the hands and they start doing like a swing dancing thing and they knock over the irreplaceable uh, bust of Elvis, who always has to face due east so we can watch the mom cook in the kitchen. Creepy. They've broken the Elvis statue, just like the gravy boat from Family Matters. That's right. What are we going to do? Oh, no. And so we're still not at the party. No, because we're going to ask the richest guy in school, who Violet just broke up with, if he will, if he, they can have $250 because Lisa goes on, like, basically they're like, oh, we don't know what to, how, we got to find the statue. We got to buy another one. Lisa finds it. It's $250. Where are we going to get $250? Now, this is the part that drove me nuts, right? Because in the Save by the Bell universe, Lisa is rich. Zach is rich, and we find out in later episodes that Violet is rich. They're basically all well off except Kelly. So all of them could have, you know, asked their parents or like pooled money together and gotten this money together. And instead, they auction Jesse off to because so yeah well we're not we're not even there we're not even there right well they said that we need to raise $250 so we're going to ask the richest guy in school yeah I will say a lot of Saved by the Bell storylines involve fundraising of some kind they're (laughs) always they're always in some kind of trouble that will go away if they can just get a few hundred bucks and you're right uh, I think we're just supposed to accept, I think, again, this this has this sort of four kids, by right, kids exactly. logic, logic, where you're just supposed to accept, like, well, we don't I, have I, don't have I don't have $200, how money? can I get How that? can I get money? And I can't tell my parents. Yeah. yeah. And so you just you just accept that they don't have access to money. I was incredulous that prior to the internet and eBay and everything that they could so easily find an exact replacement for this beloved Elvis Because it's statue. Lisa. She knows shopping. That's her whole thing. So Lisa uses her shopping skills to find an identical Elvis statue. They need to raise some money. So their first plan is let's get it through Maxwell Nordstrom by way of poker. Right. Let's challenge him to a poker game. That's right. That's right. The poker him. game did come first. Yeah. Yes. This this was hard to watch in the way that any gambling scene is hard to watch. If you've ever seen White Men Can't Jump or Rounders, it's just so painful. Well, okay. So also, this is one of two poker scenes we get on in the shows this week. That's true. And I. Was this something? Did you guys get together and play poker when you were yeah, sometimes. in high school? Like, is this a normal thing? I would say, well, the two, the two, the poker game we're going to get later in the Wonder Years is very different. That's in the context of it's something that guys do for bonding. In this case, this is like no, this is a way that we can like sort of legitimately, you know, uh, trick him. Yeah, but they had no scheme. To cheat. Well, exactly. That's the thing. There is no scheme. It's just like, oh, Zach is good at everything. Maxwell is lame. If we challenge him to poker, we'll win. Well, and they had an, they had all of them playing him. So like everybody was playing. So yeah. maybe they thought they could pool their winnings. But if you had enough to put in the pot in the first damn place, you could pool your winnings. That's true. That's together. true. So here's the thing. They don't have enough. So Really quickly, uh, it's it's down to Zach and Maxwell. Maxwell's wearing his little visor thing to show that he's like a serious. Yeah, he's a card gambler. shark. 
And first of all, no one involved with this show has ever played poker. There is no uh, concept of secrecy or trying to maintain any sense of like, oh, let's not let him know what's happening. Oh, yeah. No, it's down to the two of them. Zach holds his hand out so the entire rest of the cast can see and bets big. And they're like, wait, should you do that? And he's like, look, it's a can't lose yeah, situation. He says, Zach is telling everybody, including Maxwell, I have an unbeatable hand I can't lose. Now, you could say, well, maybe that's part of his strategy, but it's sort of a self-defeating thing. If he truly did have what we in the biz call the nuts, right? The unbeatable hand in, in poker, nuts. you wouldn't nuts. want the guy to know, right? Alternatively, if you were bluffing, if you were if you didn't really have it, but you wanted him to think you would have it, it's just the most ridiculous attempt at bluffing to w- go around the room and show everybody your hand. Look what I got. But it's anyway, unbeatable. But, but Zach is like, I have a hand that I cannot lose. We need Maxwell to put all of his chips in the pot. We don't have enough to match him. So we're going to bet Screech's dog, Hound Dog. Right. We've already broken his priceless bust. Right. So now in order to raise the money, we're going to gamble literally the, dog the away. only thing that is more valuable to his mom. What could possibly go wrong? And Screech and his family. Who bets their friend's dog? Yeah. And who would even want to win that in a poker game? Like It's just so bizarre. And of course, uh, when it finally, when it comes time to show their hands, Zach's quote unquote unbeatable hand was four queens and Max has four kings. So out Maxwell goes with the dog and everyone's like, oh no, now what do we do? So the answer is we're going to go shake him down. Yeah. So they go to shake him down and he's... Um, he's installed anti-bully technology wait. against Slater. Yes, he's installed anti-bullying technology. He's got like this Apple Watch kind of thing from the 80s that's huge that uh, has a bully alarm on it. But is this before or after Screech has the dream sequence where his mom is dead? We were just going to get to that. So (laughs) Saved by the Bell, again, they love to do these little fantasy sequences with the uh, the pink fuzzy border around the screen. And so, yeah, they have his mom come in as an angel. Wait, but so his mom comes in as an angel and Mr. Belding comes in as As Elvis. Elvis, Because we haven't had Belding in the episode. In the episode, except for in that one scene when the bully alarm goes off. They are both wearing wings. Yeah. Right? But to show that they're angels, they are also both flapping their arms as they walk around. And I, I was... Watching that, I was just dying to know because they look ridiculous. Obviously, the uh, whole you know they're ridiculous. they're flapping their arms, sort of scurrying back and forth uh, onto the set, and I'm just wondering, like, is is it a case of these actors were just so goofy and ribald that they're like, let me flap my wings, that'll be fun, <laughs> or was it the director going, hey, you guys. Fl- flap your your yeah, hands, even a though more energy in that. <laughs> yeah, and then these poor people had to had to do that. I oh, don't know. It was so ridiculous. Because Belding looked especially reluctant when he had to do his little uh, arm flapping thing on the way out. You could see him kind of look to the camera, like, "Yeah, I know." It's, he it's did. Stupid. He did almost like a little T Rex sparkle fingers. Is all what he did. Yeah. He was like, "Okay, here I go." But anyway, so they they try to shake down Maxwell. Maxwell's like, "No, but you can get me a date with." Len- Legs, which we're all just supposed to assume that that means Jesse and not Violet, um, even though he hadn't called her legs yet oh, in that everyone, episode. That's Jesse's thing. She's tall. She's tall. So they say, okay, we're going to get you a date with legs. Um, so, and then in order to raise the money, because the now the date is to get the dog back. So not right. only do they've they got have multiple problems, they've got to get the dog back and they've got to get money. So here's where the party finally comes in, which they say we can charge a cover. Yeah. Charge $2 a head yeah. for people to come to a party at Screech's house. That party will also be the site of Maxwell's date with Jesse. Uh, and in return, and it will all end by ten o'clock, so we can get the dog back. Yeah, That's and so this this is like a straight up ransom 
situation right. where he's like, I will not give this dog back until the date is complete. So in order to raise the amount of money that they need, they have to invite 125 people over to Screech's house. That is a huge party. $2 a head is a ridiculous amount. But I guess they achieve that, right? Because yeah, they do they replace achieve that it. before 10 o'clock, although there's absolutely not 125 people in that house um, from what you can see. And if you had that many people in that house, there would be more things broken. Yeah, I guess we're just supposed to assume there's, you know, all the bedrooms and all the side rooms and stuff are just bursting with people. But yeah, it, it is. It's a party. Uh, the, also a non-alcoholic party. Yes, this is another show that's not going to really acknowledge the existence of drugs or alcohol. Jesse shows up with Maxwell Nordstrom, and these douchebags make fun of her for being on a date with him when they made her do it. <laughs> they, you, you can't ask one of your friends to do this huge favor and go on a date with this vile guy so that you could get your friend's dog back. And then when she shows up, go, hey, how's a date going with Maxwell, huh? Huh? What, are you going to get married, huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah. No, it's not good so at all. <laughs> we have another parent coming home early scenario. Right, yes. Yeah. So then the mom comes in in the middle of the party and um, everybody freaks out. Oh, no, what are we going to do? And then... Oh, Zach, you know, of course, the mom came in after they'd already raised all the money. So they were good. They were going to be able to Lisa left to go buy the other statue because right. the, the statue is replaced within minutes, basically, right. of reaching their fundraising. Well, goal. they so they reach their fundraising goal and then immediately turn to Maxwell and they're like, OK, well, date's over, you know, bring the dog. And they were, it, you know, it's 10 o'clock. So Lisa leaves just before 10 p.m. to go get this statue. Um, so she comes back in and uh, no it's Slater that comes back in Slater goes with Lisa right because Slater comes back in with the Elvis after the mom has come home so mom comes home sees the party is like hey what's going on here Slater comes in trips over mom's suitcase the right. Elvis statue goes flying One final through the moment air moment of suspense Zach leaps and catches it midair, lands behind the sofa, stands up, sets it on the on the um, pedestal that had been empty the, this whole time, and then turns around and is like, it's a party for you, and gives a snap and down falls a happy anniversary banner. Yes. He winks at the camera, episode over. Yes, classic. Uh, Zach's schemes often involve things that are sort of like folded up inside like a panels sign and things. unrolling yeah exactly so he can just like click a little thing and something unfurls and the whole sort of scenery changes yes in fact it was the girl who you pointed out earlier in the episode when we were watching it the extra who was standing in the back staring at the Zach mm -hmm. and Slater conversation yeah. and not dancing but just like fully staring at the conversation that was happening that was the girl who reached behind the wall and pulled the invisible right. string. So this was not, we as the audience were not privy to any of this, but no. apparently all the while that they were doing all this other scheming. This girl was just waiting for her signal. Zach had also made arrangements with this girl to know, to, to go. So in addition to everything else, in the event that uh, Screech's mom comes home early, we need to make this look like an anniversary party. So we're going to have like a speakeasy style rig where we can just change things with like the flip of a switch. What got me was if you're not allowed to have a party, then an anniversary party is still against the rules. And also mom came home early. So why are you throwing the anniversary party yeah. early? <laughs> mom walks in, sees a house full of 175 teenagers and is immediately fine with it when she is told it's a party for your Samuel. anniversary to the husband that we have not seen. He must the still be parking episode. the car. Yeah. Who knows? So in contrast to family matters, this is, I think, very much giving the message that you said you took from the last show, which is if you're going to have a party when your parents are out of town, just be good at it and have a plan. It. Yeah. You know, if they come home early, make sure you have some sort of ruse uh, ready to go. Have really dumb parents. That's the that's the moral of that story. Yeah. You could just, yeah, you, you could see how the perspective is completely different. This one is very much... Um, aren't parents lame? 
Doesn't it stink it's when they so don't want you? It's so easy to it? pull one over on them. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, I guess that's going to bring us to the Wonder Years. That is. That's going to bring us to the Wonder Years. Okay, that was from the Party When the Parents Are Away episode. We're about to move on to the Starting a Business episode. But first, we have to continue our quiz. Let me have it. Which of these actresses never appeared on Saved by the Bell? Denise Richards, Christine Taylor, Soleil Moon Fry, or Donica McKellar? Soleil Moon Fry appeared in the one that we saw. Yep. She's uh, the weird, like, gold digging girlfriend. Yes, that's right. Um, she really was into Screech and she wanted that watch. Who were the other choices? Denise Richards, Christine Taylor, who was in Hey Dude, yeah. and uh, Dana, Danica McKellar. Denise Richards, Slater saves her from drowning in the summer episode. Oh, so, uh, I would not have remembered that. I'm going to say Danica, what's her face? McKellar, that is correct. Why does Mr. Belding's cool brother Rod ditch a planned field trip with the kids? A uh, stewardess. He's got a date with a stewardess. <laughs> exactly. Which bovine is also the name of a Bayside football player? Ox. <laughs> Nice job. When Zach lies to Danielle and says he's a USC student, what is his fake major? Oh, that's those are the later ones with Jeff. Um, I don't give me the choices. Biology, photojournalism, women's studies or economics? Photojournalism. My guess would be women's studies, but you are correct. Yeah, that sounds right. What's the name of Bayside's mental health hotline? Oh, the teen line? The teen line is a choice, and that is correct. What kind of animal is Slater's pet, Artie? He's a lizard. <laughs> a chameleon. Or, chameleon, yeah. yes. Zach convinces Lisa to go on a date with Jesse's evil stepbrother, Eric, by promising her tickets to see which musical act. <sighs> okay. Um, it's either George Michael or MC Hammer. <laughs> are they both choices? Those are both choices. All right. There's... Um, <laughs> I feel like those, oh God, they're both incentives in different Saved by the Bell episodes. I'm going to say George Michael. All right, let's see. Oh, it's, MC Hammer. it's incorrect. It's the Hammer Man. Incorrect. It doesn't right. tell me who the what the right answer is. All right, number eighteen. Over the course of the series, we meet all but which of these Belding family members? A bubbly niece, Penny Belding, the loyal wife, Becky Belding, the domineering mom, Ethel Belding, and the newborn baby, Zach Belding. No, you meet Becky and Zach in the same episode when Zach delivers Zach in in the elevator. elevator. (laughs) Yes, uh, you meet the aforementioned Rod, his brother. You meet uh, Penny in a storyline where she uh, he wants somebody to take her out on a date. It's the mom I don't think you ever met. All right, you are correct. Which of these would you not find in the home of Screech Powers? A hound dog, a robot named Kevin, a statue of Elvis, a painting of Carl Sagan. The last one. Uh-huh. That is correct. And finally, what happens when students wear fake class rings Zach buys from the artist Gem Diamond? They, uh, they, they just like they turn their hands a funny color or something. Yeah, their fingers turn green. That's correct. All right. I like I like how I'm doing. I'm I think you were, track. what, nine out of ten on that one. OK, so this next segment is from our Let's Start a Business podcast. I feel like that had Leave it to Beaver. Uh, that 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 had a nice spread that took us from the old days right up into iCarly. Yeah, they had the, uh, yeah. They had all we the... had um, it wasn't Leave it to Beaver, was it? Oh, yeah, it was Leave it to Beaver and the one with the twins that are cousins that you don't like. Oh, Patty Duke. Yeah, it was also Patty Duke, right? Yeah, yeah. I like Patty Duke. I just think identical twins are impossible. Yes, uh, uh, yeah. identical twin cousins. Right. Are so impossible. this, this, yes. Right. <laughs> you, <laughs> I think identical twins are impossible. I've never seen. It. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is the Saved by the Bell addition to the Let's Start a Business tradition. Uh, here it is. Saved by the Bell. This is season four, episode three. Screech's Spaghetti Sauce. Screech's Spaghetti Sauce. Now, this is 
our second time talking about Saved by the Bell on the podcast, but I feel like the first one we did, the one about Screech's house party, this one is much more quintessential, I think. This takes place much more in the school. We get, we definitely got a Zach scheme in that one too, but I feel like this is one of your straight up down the middle, vintage, classic Saved by the Bell episodes. I have to say, I was a little disappointed with myself. There was a time when I could identify which episode of Saved by the Bell it is by just that first establishing shot of the hallway or whatever it was in a second. I could go, oh, that's the one where Screech has to pose as an alien to fool the tabloid reporter. I could just tell. <laughs> it was just so ingrained in my brain on a subconscious you, level. You've got saved by the bell autism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And now, by contrast, we had this thing on for five minutes. And I'm going, is this even the right episode? I don't know. Because it starts with a story about the school TV station. Right. So this is, they're all taking a communications class that Mr. Belding is teaching. And the project for the year is they're, they have to put on a local cable access TV show. And so that's what they do. And then within, you know, 30 seconds, the show is up and running and everybody has parts and they're, they're ready to go. But it, what you were saying about this being more of like a standard kind of quintessential Saved by the Bell episode, as opposed to the other one we watched, is kind of interesting because I was watching, I was noticing the parallels in the beats. We've got a con, one of our fellow classmates who's not a regular person in the cast, a guest star who happens in this case to be Punky Brewster, Salemum Moon Fry. Um, so we've got to con her out of some money because she's a bad guy. And we've got some sort of scheme where we want to make money or we need to get money. That's happening. Oh, and then we end up with like Screech having a girlfriend. Both, like all of these things happen in both of in both of the episodes. Yeah, it's true. Certainly a scheme is at the center of 90% of all Saved by the Bell episodes. But yeah, the way we get there, it's interesting because there's already been a Saved by the Bell episode all about their radio station. And they discover the school radio station and each one of them has their own idea of a different show to do. So this first act of the story is reminiscent of that. And we get Jesse doing the hard-hitting journalism thing where we say, oh, she's going to do an interview with Mr. Belding. And then she grills him about, there's $500 missing from the petty cash and we saw you ride in a BMW or whatever. Yes, because BMWs cost $500. Yeah, no, I, I noticed that too. Even in the 90s, I don't think that that was going to get you there. But yeah, the the story begins as a everybody's got a job to do in this TV station thing. But all of that is sort of to set up. It turns out that Screech has this amazing spaghetti recipe. Spaghetti sauce recipe, right. So that's his grandmother's. So they've got Zach and Lisa are the anchors of this Wake Up LA morning show, cable access morning show they're putting on. And like you said, Jesse's the hard-hitting investigative reporter. Kelly is the weather girl. And what what was Slater's role? He like counted them in like the stage manager. But then he went and was interviewing uh, Screech because Screech was like the celebrity chef that was guesting. That's right. So he was so Slater was interviewing him about his spaghetti sauce and helping him put things into the sauce and then was the first one to taste it and was like, whoa, this is actually good. And then everybody grabs a spoon and comes over and tastes the spaghetti sauce. And it's great. And then Zach is like, oh. I have a brilliant idea. Yeah. So Zach gets dollar signs in his eyes, just like Patty did when she learned that Kathy was this amazing seamstress. We should also say that on the periphery of all this is this new character, Robin, like you said, played by Salil Moon Fry. She has another friend that she hangs out with. Now, I understand this show is set in the Palisades in California. Maybe it's a different scene out there. We did not have gold diggers in my high school. That was not a thing, <laughs> you know? The idea that there would be these... And in the other uh, episode we covered, we had the tycoon character who would like walk around and snap his fingers at his girlfriend. Now we get these stereotypical gold digger girls that are like, oh, I need to find a guy that I'm going to live off of. It just struck me as very grown-up problems, as though some... A TV writer walked into the writer's room and was like, don't you hate it how all these rich guys get all the girls? Let's write an episode about that. <laughs> and someone's like, I don't know. The, the show's about 
kids. I don't think that's really a thing for them. And he's like, no, no, just do it. Well, so her character's name is Robin, Punky, right? Punky's name is Robin. Which is a joke, I think, on Robin Leach, because there was also a Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous sketch on another Saved by the Bell episode with Robin Screech, uh, Screech doing his, his... Robin Leach impression. Yeah. So I think that's maybe a thing. that's maybe that's calling that back. Well, so there without any, you know, intro at all, like right after the right after the credit sequence and the theme song, Zach walks into this classroom and we get Soleil Moon Fry standing there and he clocks her as being an attractive girl and he walks right up to her and he's like, Hey, you know, you want to go out on a date sometime? And she's like, Well, what kind of car do you drive? Yeah. And he says, in nineteen six nineteen sixty six red mustang convertible which he bought in a previous episode or like in the in the previous season and she was like oh call me when you're you know when you get a car that was you know made in the 90s or whatever and is like that's an i don't like old cars peace out because you're cheap yeah and then a few scenes later slater also tries to ask her out um and she's like well where will we go and he's like oh i figured we'd just go get burgers at the max and she's like i am not interested in you unless you're taking me to a five-star restaurant again burn in hell unless you are a millionaire fellow high school student. So yeah, that's going to play into how this all plays out. They decide, let's start a business around Screech's spaghetti sauce. Right, because everybody wanted after they saw it on the show. Everyone's like, where can we get it? How can we get some? So they decide to bottle it. They go to the chemistry department and they get a bunch of flasks and then they come back and they've got a whole assembly line set up. They've got corks. They've got labels that Lisa has, she's like, I've printed a thousand and Screech has a ton of, has made a vat of spaghetti sauce. So they're ready to go. They, and then of course the assembly line comedy. Yeah. You mentioned I love Lucy before. I think this is an obvious, I mean, homage is, is being generous. You know, (laughs) I think someone, again, some schmuck walked into the writer's room and said, Hey, you guys remember that? I love Lucy with the assembly line. Let's do something like that. It's just all of these unforced errors. It's screech letting the vials fall off of the assembly line for no reason. It's just this slapstick physical comedy that doesn't really make sense or just doesn't have that believability that good physical comedy has. Screech can't, he can't get to a rag fast enough that nobody's turning off the assembly line. He then, the things keep falling and falling and falling. There was a moment where he like picked up one of the flasks and put it back on the assembly line and it shattered because it's made out of candy glass, but he, you know, whatever, that was an oops. And so then they're just trying there. And then he hits the thing to make the assembly line go slower and it goes twice as fast. Right. And so this causes a little bit of a Mandela effect type thing for me, because you remember that scene and you go, okay, so this is going to be another one where they got too many orders and they couldn't keep up with it. But that's actually not the story here. That slapstick stuff just kind of happens. And we sort of accept like, well, we move on one way or another. They got the spaghetti sauce. Yeah. Just like the earlier scene where they're doing the wake up LA, we get a vignette with each character. Like we get to get Kelly Kapowski in a bathing suit and soaking wet. So it's funny you say vignette because I was thinking when watching this, yeah, they really Saved by the Bell is almost a sketch show as much as it is a sitcom. Like they're always trying to come up with ways to get them in a funny outfit or get them to do a certain thing. So yeah, in the case of this first act with the television station, it gives us a chance to, oh, what if Jesse was, you know, hard hitting reporter? And what if these two were like TV anchors? And then at the end, we're going to get a whole excuse to get them in disguise. We'll talk about that when we get to it. But what we get in this middle part is a TV commercial where they all get to be Italian. And oh, Jesse gosh. gets to be the Italian matriarch with enormous breasts. And uh, yeah, it's a fun sort of Saved by the Bell skit. Yeah, she's wearing this sort of like rotund kind of thing on her hips and butt and in her boob area as well. And then Zach comes in and he's got things stuffed so to make it look like he's got a big gut that he's kind of holding up and everybody's talking in these really 
bad Italian accents. And uh, worst of all is Slater, who comes in at the end, and he's supposed to be the son. And uh, and and he his Italian accent sounds Hispanic. Like it's just all of them are just bad. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then but then it ends on Screech, who's like you know the the recipe's a secret, but the sauce so- or the so- the sauces he says, or the something. sauce you can have the secret. She's a mine. She's that, a mine. That's exactly. his catchphrase. Yeah, it's Uncle Screech to the rescue because Jesse is the Italian matriarch can't cook. That's the joke of the commercial. Right. And yeah, I think that commercial sort of bridges us narratively from the debacle that was their assembly line to the amazing success that is their business. Right. And so we have a moment where they're Zach and Slater and a couple of the other ones are in the hallway talking about what a success the business is going to be. And Punky Brewster, Robin overhears and is like, oh, I know who I'm going after now. And then swoops in on Screech and is like, so are you going to take me out, big boy? Yeah. And there yeah. they go. So we get another specific subgenre of Saved by the Bell episode, which is Screech as high status, right? These rare times when it happened when Kelly got together with Screech in an episode because he helps her study. These rare times when the guys, the cool guys, Zach and Slater, are left looking dumb and going, how can we be more like Screech, right? Because Kelly and Jesse and Lisa are making fun of them that the girl that turned them all down is now Screech's girlfriend. And she's giving him the business. She's saying, you got to get me this necklace and you got to take me here Give and there. Give it in the business, as we say, and leave yeah. it to Beaver. <laughs> yeah. And interestingly, there's it's saved by the bell. So there's no discussion of like... Is there anything going on, you know, between these two that makes it worth Screech's while to be doing all this stuff? We no, never get that. no, of course not. But we see them at the max, um, which, yeah, she doesn't want to go to the max. So she, when Kelly comes over to take their order, she orders off the menu and says, well, they have lobster thermidor next door. So go and get it for me. Here's $40 right. and gives her the money to go. And, and Screech is like, yeah, I'll have lobster thermometer too. That I thought was a genuine, and if you get even one of these in the Save by the Bell episode, you're lucky. Like a genuine, clever, funny laugh what I, I i'm as ignorant to screech about this what is the thing she orders lobster thermidor which, thermidor yeah yeah and he goes i'll have the lobster thermometer too <laughs> i think that's very funny but yeah she uh has such disdain that she's like you kelly the waitress you have to go next door to get my food for me so obviously you know screech and her they're alienating themselves from everybody they're like, Zach, you have to talk to Screech. He can't see that his girlfriend is this, you know, money-grubbing, materialistic uh, horror show that doesn't really like him. Right, because Kelly sees Screech give Robin this very fancy watch. And she's like, oh, Pookie, oh, but you didn't get me the necklace that goes with it. I just have to have the necklace that goes with it. And that's when Kelly goes over. But what we've skipped over is another classic Saved by the Bell moment that happens in all of these episodes where they contrive a reason to get the girls all in the same, like variations of the same costume and do a dance, a song, or a cheer. Yes. And in this case, it's a Mamma Mia, go get Screech's Spaghetti sauce cheer. Yes, I wrote the girls perform a promotional cheer at the max. Yeah, that's part of the ascension of this business to its, you know, success. And so, yeah, all the pieces are in place and they do great. Even Mr. Belding, the principal, likes their stuff. He makes some comments about how his wife can't get enough of the spaghetti sauce. And everything is going fine. Their downfall, like I said, is not that they got too big for their britches with what the order they were trying to fill or anything. It's that they get served a cease and desist letter by a lawyer from the Betty Crocker company who Betsy shows Crocker. up the Betsy Crocker company who shows up in their high school hallway. Right. No visitors pass visible. Yeah. This man would be arrested on site. <laughs> he walks up to them in their high school hallway and says, I'm from 
Betsy Crocker. Yes. Uh, Zach says, oh, well, then you can talk to me. I'm his business manager. And if you think we're going to sell you this this recipe for nothing, you're mistaken. And he says, oh, no, we don't want to buy anything from you. We want to sue you. Stop using our recipe. And uh, when he asks Screech about it, Screech goes, oh, of course, it's from Betsy Crocker. That's why it's good. My grandmother couldn't cook. Now, I don't think companies who publish recipes in a book can sue this. if you use the recipe. Yes. I was wondering about that. What is the intellectual property situation regarding recipes? Because you're right. When Rachel Ray publishes a book, that copyrighted material it's not the actual recipes. It's all of her editorializing and, and personality stuff. and stuff. Exactly. And just because you follow a recipe doesn't mean it's going to be as good as like, you know, Gordon Ramsay makes it or whatever. Right. And so I think, yeah, I don't, I think that this is a contrivance for the show. I don't think that this is something that can actually happen. I think we may have somehow discovered a plot hole in an episode of Saved by the Bell. What? So they agreed to stop making the sauce. That's fine. But now they need to get money. Why? Just to recoup everything that they spent? Well, so there's two things that happen. They've been using the school's paper and ink to print the labels. They've been using the school oh, cafeteria right. to buy the produce. They've been using the school kitchen. They've been taking all of the flasks from the chem department. So right. they've been using all of these school materials and Belding has this crazy bill for $1,500 in these school supplies, all these materials. And he's like, what the heck is this? And then realizes it once he takes a flask of the um, spaghetti sauce home, realizes, oh my my gosh, these kids, I'm going to get that Zach Morris. And he comes and he slams the bill down. And he says, you need to repay all of this $1,500. Meanwhile, Screech has been told that his girlfriend is, you know, money grubbing and doesn't believe it, but then overhears her talking to her friend Chloe about how he's going to buy her this and buy her that. And he thinks I like him. Isn't that gross? And we get a classic screech, like sad face, double sad face, drooping down and sad walking. Body. Yeah, yeah, sad body, like, sl like slumping off down the hallway after he overhears this. So he agrees to Zach's secondary scheme, this is where we get the con, to convince Robin to buy the business yes. um, and fork over all this money. And then that's the money they're going to use to right. pay building. Robin doesn't know that their business is worthless because it's based upon a stolen Betsy Crocker recipe. So they are going to do what is always the first resort in the world of Saved by the Bell, a disguise, right? They're going to have Zach put on a trench coat and a black hat and a weird mustache and pretend to be a German baron of some kind <laughs> who comes to the to the max and basically gets in a bidding war with her, says, I want to buy your recipe or your company for a thousand dollars. And she's like, Screech, don't sell it to him. I'll give you 1200 and so on. Right. And so, and then the, all the other cast of characters are there and they just are bidding against each other to drive up the bid, which is silly. And then she's finally like, she's like 2000 and they're all like sold. And so she opens up her checkbook and she says, Oh, I only have 1800 in my checking account as high schoolers normally do. And then she says, Oh, but wait, take your watch back, take your necklace back. That'll cover the difference. Um, here's the check, gives it to him and off she goes. And she's like, ha ha suckers. I don't even want to date you. Ha ha ha. I'm going to be rich. Get out of here. Screech. I was never interested in you. And they were like, Oh, Screech, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, it's all right. I have a date with her friend, Chloe. And they're like, yeah, so he's getting right back on that merry-go-round. He hasn't learned anything. I wrote, nothing takes me back to the 90s like writing a personal check in a diner. <laughs> just that whole sight of her getting out the checkbook and writing it was just very old-timey. But yeah, in this one we get, it's not specifically the thing of we have to make too many, but it is the thing of Zach's entrepreneurial sort of... His his greed, his his getting ahead of himself, his trying to monetize his friends' skills, just like in Patty Duke, 
it leads to a bad path. Right. And this is a really fun premise. What we don't get in this episode really is a life lesson like we got in the other two. Well, that's saved by the bell for you. The life lesson is always if you are not fooling your parents or teachers or enemies, try harder. You know, it's <laughs> always about you, you need a better scheme than you need a better disguise. They they never get the comeuppance that they should. That they should. But we also get another parallel in this episode with the last episode, in addition to the con and the scheme, which happens in all of them, and Screech having a girlfriend. It That girlfriend is a special guest star that has gone on to do many other things, right? We got Punky Brewster and we had Tori Spelling in the last one. Yeah. Uh, strangely, Screech's love life actually produces a lot of a lot of heavy hitters. All right. We ready to move on to iCarly? Yes. All right. So that was from the Let's Start a Business podcast. We're going to move on to the Hooked on Pills podcast in Woo! a minute. But first, uh, give me some more trivia. All right. What is the name of Zach's old Native American friend? Oh, geez. That that one's rough. Um, I feel like his name is his name just like George or something. Give me the option. You got Whispering Wind, Chief Henry, Chief Willie, or Walks with Miners. <laughs> They're having fun with that Same last again. one. Same again. Uh, Whispering Wind, Chief Henry, Chief Willie, Walks with Miners. Yeah, it's one of those middle two. I Chief. I don't know if those really sound right. Chief Willie? Incorrect. Must right. be Chief Henry, but don't know because it won't tell us the right answer. What physical trait makes Jessie most insecure? Her height. That's correct. Finish the lyrics to Zack Attack's Friends Forever. Gladly. If you're down, I'll pick you up. I'll never let you fall. If you ever need someone... Oh, wow, I really did. I set myself up here. <laughs> <I'm realizing laughs> if like I, I knew the tune, I'd sing Friends Forever. Yeah, exactly. I'm realizing now Always I only will know be there. the chorus. <laughs> All right, say those words again. All right, if you're down, I'll pick you up. I'll never let you fall if you ever need someone. Okay, well, let's go by the logic that the Saved by the Bell writers are always going to go for the most obvious and simplistic possible rhyme yes and all of the choices rhyme with fall okay i forgot there'd be choices go yes. ahead i'm waiting for your call uh -huh. i'll meet you at the mall uh -huh. i'm just down the hall uh -huh. i'm on the other side of that wall the first one i'm waiting for your call yeah that's correct yeah all right <laughs> Which prestigious Northeastern University accepted Zach after his surprisingly high SAT score? It's um, it's Princeton. Yeah, okay. it's Princeton. It's incorrect. Uh, the other choices were Yale, Harvard, or Columbia. We know that he didn't go to those. Harvard, yeah. His the the waiter plays the guy from Harvard. I don't know. Jesse wants to go to Stanford. All right, sorry. <laughs> Stacy Carosi's boyfriend Craig cheats to win what annual competition at the Malibu Sands Beach Club? Volleyball. There is a one on one basketball tournament, a triathlon, an ATV race, or a push up contest? Uh, um, I'll say the ATV race. An ATV race is correct. Who played Screech's girlfriend, Violent? Violet Ann Bickerstaff. Tori Spelling. Ding, ding. Um, what song did Screech, Zach, and Slater lip sync to in their version of the Risky Business Underwear Dance? Barbara Ann. We watched that episode. <laughs> I was saying, they just, our listeners just reheard us talking about it. Yeah. Uh, when Zach dresses a woman to woo Screech, what does he call himself? Oh, God. I mean, there's so many times that he dresses like a woman what are the choices candy bambi mam mandy or trandy bambi that's ah, correct what phone number should you should one call to buy screech's famous spaghetti sauce in the episode we're about to listen to oh god i need the number are the choices <laughs> it's all five 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 uh -huh. and then five 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 yum 555 five, spag, 555 five, five, mmm, or 555 five, ah. Mmm. Mm, I think I remember that too, and that's correct. All right. 
It's, yeah. You're doing great. Be better. Okay. Uh, this next segment is from our Hooked on Pills episode. This is where we talked about Michael J. Fox, uh, Alex P. Keaton having to study and... What was Urkel's deal? He didn't need to he study. Got, no, he, just, he, he got like spiked. Yeah, right? he thought he was taking vitamin C's yeah. and then <laughs> Epstein, went crazy. Epstein, or not Epstein, Washington from Welcome Back, Cotter. Was, was on, on real pills. pills, but then Horshack was the one who took them unknowingly. Yeah, exactly. And so this was the Saved by the Bell segment from the Hooked on Pills podcast. Iconic. Here you go. So, Saved by the Bell, this is Season 2, Episode 9, Jesse's Song. So, this is the iconic, everyone has seen it, everyone knows about it, caffeine pill addiction episode. Yeah, totally. Now, we should say that that is the case for a specific age group. And I have to kind of remind myself that, like, not everybody was born in between 1978 and 1983 and watched Saved by the Bell every single day after school and then again when the new ones came out on Saturday mornings. Yes, but this scene is so ubiquitous. Like, the yeah. memes now, people still use it. And, yes. and and the young the young folks still use this. But meme. I guess what I'm saying is if you asked me to personally perform a one man show of this entire episode verbatim, I could do that. Whereas <laughs> for people older and younger than us, it's well, like, oh, that was that cheesy show from the nineties where the girl has the crazy breakdown. Right, yeah. but most of us don't have your encyclopedia well. knowledge of Saved by the Bell. <laughs> So Saved by the Bell, we've talked about it before. This is, even though it's an NBC show, it sort of mirrors the rise of Nickelodeon and the sort of Disney Channel. This is stuff, we're starting to see the beginnings of stuff made only for kids and no interest in entertaining the rest of the family. And again, it... it well, it, it was a Saturday morning right. show, just like just like Silver Spoons. Yes, it aired on Saturday mornings and then again in ubiquitous uh, syndication after school. And the whole mentality of it is just, you know, you could not get farther from the family ties grounded in reality thing. This is a show where if you want to show that one of your teenager characters is smart, you have him have a robot that he built himself and who can walk and talk and, you know, hang out with you. The first episode I remember of watching Saved by the Bell is the one where Screech and Kelly have a little thing. And so they do that bit of showing the montage of the rumor creeping across school. And then eventually they show you George Bush and Gorbachev talking with the subtitle of Kelly and Screech. And then the footage of the International Space Station with the subtitles of Kelly and Screech. So like the whole thing is this heightened, ridiculous, silly take on the world, which makes it all the more preposterous i think when they try to do these super serious heavy episodes sure but for the actors i mean i think elizabeth berkeley has given interviews in the you know intervening years between this show and now and um talking just about how nice it was to kind of as an actress you know, yes, she's playing a teenager. Yes, she's a young woman. But to get something meaty and juicy yes. to play. And, you know, I think the uh, the jury's still out on whether or not it was a solid performance well, or an over-the-top performance. <laughs> here's what I'll say. Let's, let's hold off on that particular scene until we get to it. But my take has always been in general that the acting on Saved by the Bell is pretty good. And that... It really, it's not their fault that everything about the show is absurd, that the writing right, is it's absurd. it's hokey and it's ho purposefully hokey because it's for kids, just like Wizards of Waverly Place isn't going to win an Emmy, you know what I mean? Exactly. And I think that all of them, with the possible exception, unfortunately, of Dustin Diamond, I think they all do a pretty good job of holding their own with this stuff, whether it's the cheesy jokes, whether it's the over-the-top drama that they attempt sometimes. I don't think the acting is primarily at fault. So so let's break it down. It begins with Jessie in the Max. She's drinking coffee, even though she says she doesn't like coffee. 
This is another Alex P. Keaton situation. She's overwhelmed by the pressures of her her tests. Right. She is not doing well in geometry. She is the, you know, straight A student, always does well in everything. And she's got this massive geometry test and it's just not well, clicking for I her. I mean, Slater explains why, what the problem is. Girls suck at math. That's right. right. That's... He, he very clearly explains it. Uh, by the way, this episode is also their first kiss. Really? Yeah. I was paying a lot of attention to the to the Slater and Jesse dynamic here. They have, you know, th- there's all different eras of Saved by the Bell. Sometimes Zach and Slater are sort of vying for Kelly's attention. But for a big chunk in the middle of the show, Slater and Jesse are this romantic pairing. For a while, they're just sort of flirting in this opposites attract way. And then eventually they're boyfriend and girlfriend, but they're still always fighting. But it's presented as this like, hey, what a crazy couple. She's an opinionated, you know, sort of political activist, kind of very intelligent young woman. And he's a sexist slob. (laughs) What a fun combination. And yet the reality is, especially in this one, it's just like Slater is bringing nothing to the table. You know, I mean, he's bringing his dimples and his muscles and he's an amazing (laughs) looking guy. But literally every single thing he says is just a dig that girls suck at math why he says literally why weren't you born a man like it's not even a funny joke it's just like girls suck guys rule i don't know so take all of that stuff you were saying about alex p keaton being able or or michael j fox being able to deliver a line that was you know misogynistic or seemingly out of touch um or you know dated in some sort of like gender roles or whatever and being able to say it with like a wink so that it was still funny that does not exist in the world of Saved by the Bell we just have Slater being like hey mama too bad you can't be like a guy and good at math and she Jesse just like rolls her eyes at him and and gives it you know gives it right back like well you know you're a muscle bound idiot or something like that but because it's become this banter of theirs Mm -hmm. even though Slater isn't playing it in the same way that Alex P. Keaton is playing it where it is adorable. It's Jesse that's playing it in such a way that allows him to kind of get away with it because she's not taking him seriously. She's rolling her eyes and telling him he's an idiot, and yet they're still flirting. Yeah, no, the show sees this as totally good people on both sides. Like, this is like Slater's thing is he's a little bit sexist. Jesse's thing is, like I said, she's kind of an activist. And if anything, she's often portrayed in the light of she's annoying and she takes things too seriously. Well, that's what always happens happens to smart women. What are you what are you saying, Jay? You don't notice this in the world? Yeah. No, I, <laughs> I was aware of it at 12 years old watching Jesse on Saved by the Bell. Oh, so, man. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to keep her head above water studying for exams and everything. The gang is filtering in and they cheer her up in the usual way of having your girlfriends come hover over you and all singing in perfect harmony to this like semi-diegetic music track and and that's that's their thing right never never before this episode or or since but in this episode that's what they do to blow off steam that's right hey you're feeling down come on let's show her what we've been working on lisa and then they start singing tonight's a night we're gonna make it happen and yeah. they're all like harmonizing and stuff and so and the guys are like what oh yeah. this is the first of three songs we get in this episode we should mention of course in addition to all the drug stuff saved by the bell has all kinds of different musical expeditions sometimes they're a band called zack attack sometimes they're a doo-wop group called the five aces in this particular case the three of them the three girls right they're not a band yet because no. zack has not invented them phil specter style <laughs> so yeah this is establishing that jesse is being pulled from all sides because in addition to having to prepare for all of these Uh, midterms or tests she also has this like amateur singing thing which so far uh hasn't been a big deal but it's it's going to become a big deal when they they record a demo tape against their will 
because of you know because of Screech in one of his of most famous disguises, exactly. yes, Sinead O'Connor. So Zach at the max when they do their little like impromptu harmonizing thing says, you know, my dad knows a record executive and he's been looking for a girl group just like you guys. Maybe I could get you guys an audition. And Jesse says no. And the girls are like, oh, come on, Jesse. It's no big deal. Like, you know, let's do it. And so I guess they, you know, Zach sends off their information, but they don't have like a tape that they're sending off. And he sends off their pictures and the record exec is interested because they're hot. Yeah. Now, to be clear, this I'm not sure if this is before or after the time when Zach sends their pictures to a modeling agency and also against their will, like starts them in careers as models. Uh, This is something that Zach likes to do to just sort of he likes to hook his friends up with all sorts of uh, all sorts of entertainment gigs. Submit them to various agencies and organizations. (laughs) Yeah, but so as a side plot to whatever else is happening. But this is a jam packed episode. Yes. So then the record. Zach says, I'm interested. Well, well, Give me on. a demo, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the, they need to make a demo. And so I, I feel like this is almost as infamous as Jesse's breakdown. Right. You know, their solution to everything in Saved by the Bell is disguises. And right? we have these, to record the girls in the locker room. Yes, these people are not capable of recognizing their best friend standing two feet away from them if they're wearing a funny wig or glasses or something. And so, like I said, this is one of Screech's many disguises, but I think one of his most beloved. He goes into the girls' locker room with this, you know, he's he's dressed as an old lady, and when they ask him what his name is, he says, Sinead O'Connor. And... Uh, it's just a funny joke, I guess, that he couldn't think of anything else. This was well, when she was doing, super famous. He's doing an Irish accent right. as well. And then he says to the girls, like, oh, you know what I like to do, lassies, when I'm sad? I like to sing. Yeah, yeah. So he gets them to, again, all sing in perfect harmony. Uh, he, he says, why don't you go ahead and sing into my broomstick and pretend like it's a tape recorder? Into the <laughs> like, mop handle, normal yes. Request. Just sing into it like it's a microphone. Right, which I guess it is. I guess he has a exactly. microphone that's hidden what in he, his, that's in his joke. mop handle. And yeah, I don't know like what the other, you know, aspiring girl groups are that they're competing against that this, you know, surreptitiously recorded demo with no backing music or anything in the locker room is good enough for this you know, so far unseen record executive to say, yeah, story checks out. Let's move to the next the next phase here. So between the demo and the pictures, the record exec says, that's it. We want to do a music video with you. And so there's a lot happening here. So now they're on board with making a music video. At some point, Zach tells them that the name of their band is Hot Sunday. That's right. You have now become Hot Sunday because you needed a name. They all just immediately are on board. I mean, like, granted, it's it's a pretty good name, but it's just (laughs) like nobody questions him at all any point like they have no input in the fact that this group even exists in what its name is in whether or not they're recording demos like they're just girls jay yeah they're well, just along for the ride in a man's world well zach refers to them as my girls at that's one right point. He says, my girls are singing tonight <laughs> again the the phil specter of bayside high zach morris uh but yeah <laughs> hopefully I'm, doesn't end up murdering anyone though i think it's before they get to to their music video, Jesse sits down with Mr. Belding, who's eating lunch in the Max by himself, right? Because this is they just, you just always have to love that Saved by the Bell has like their three sets, like the hallway, the classroom, the Max, like anything that happens in this world has to happen in one of these three places. It so, can happen in the locker room as well. That's they can, true. They can that's move true. the lockers from the hallway set and yeah. make them into a locker room. So Mr. Belding is eating lunch by himself in in the max and Jesse sits down and talks to him and says, you know, this is a thing for her on a lot of episodes. She needs to get into Stanford. You know, this is part of the the intro of the clip I pulled for the beginning of our podcast. Right. Never get into Stanford. And so he says, oh, don't worry. There's a school for everybody. Zach got into a college. I'm sure you'll get in somewhere. And so this gives us our requisite pink bordered fantasy, right, right? That we often have. Dream sequence where... 
I believe that there's a movie that's like this right now or more recently. There was like a movie in the like frat bro, bro era of movies that came out that was like this. That was like a fake school oh, that yeah. Justin Long started or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is called Surf You. Yeah. And Zach is like the coolest guy at school, of course. And everybody gets accepted to Surf You. And that's where Jessie shows up in her. It looks like the outfit that... What's her name? Um, Rory had to wear to her private yeah. school in Gilmore Girls. So um, Jesse shows up in that, ready for her first day of college, ready to study, and everybody's at the pool. Yeah, it's it's just you know exactly what you would think. She's she's having this fantasy where she's dreading that she couldn't get into anything but this you know crazy college. I feel like this was a play on those movies in the eighties. They would always have like ski university or surf university, and it would just be like a ribald sex comedy with right. a bunch of young. It's a people party and, school, exactly. And she's bummed that it's not an academic institution, and she that's what she wanted right. to get into. And so the only school because she couldn't pass geometry. That that would accept her was surf you. Yeah. I just find it funny, you know, one of the other times we were talking about Saved by the Bell, it was the pink bordered fantasy about about Screech's mom having dropped dead of the shock that he he lost her, he, he broke her statue or whatever. But in both cases, they always have to make sure that Mr. Belding comes in at the end. That's you right. know, Dennis Haskins, he doesn't get a lot to do sometimes in these episodes. So they're like, you need to bring him in as the sort of final button on the fantasy sequence. So in this case, what, he just kind of comes in as like a crazy old beach bum guy. And he's he's like, like the dean or something. Yeah. And he's like, hey guys, time to go to class. Yeah, because the whole joke is, as it often is in those moments, it's like, no, I don't take this seriously either. You know, whoever it is that's having this this fantasy or this nightmare, yeah, I'm not on your side either, you know? Right. Well, and neither was Mr. Belding in real life, because he was like, hey, you know what? My brother got into a good school, and I didn't, and look, look where I ended up. And Jesse was just like... Don't yeah. mean to be rude, but I don't really want to be a high school principal. Yeah, but when we get back to the Max post-fantasy, Jesse is sort of like has this new resolve. And she says, I'm going to ace this test no matter what. Right? That's right. So that's like the beginning of the end. And I love that she shakes Belding's hand. It was just such a funny little bit of business to me that that she decided to shake his hand before she left the scene. So before they get to their video, we do have the nighttime study session where Slater comes over to help her. And this is where they have their first kiss. Um, But he also discovers that she has caffeine pills sitting on her desk. And he's like, well, what do you need these for? And she's like, oh, I haven't taken them yet. But I was thinking, you know, because I need to stay up late and study. And I've got all this stuff going on. We don't get to see her soliloquy where she paces around the room like Alex P. Keaton. Right. No, not yet. But she's just like, it's fine. Like, you know, they're they're They sell them over the counter. They're not dangerous. I only was going to, you know, have them if I needed them because I you know, was thinking I might have to stay up late and study. But I'm feeling good now. I don't you know, you helped me. I don't feel like I need to study anymore and he's like okay good we'll throw those away and she's like I will I will and then he goes to leave and then she runs after him and gives him a kiss yeah and it's funny I didn't realize that that was their first kiss because I thought it was weird when he says I'll never wash these lips again yeah (laughs) and I just thought like all right guy calm down like it's not that big isn't she your girlfriend (laughs) no Uh, not yet at this point that was why it was a big deal and the big you know the audience woos at Saved by the Bell anytime there's a kiss so you can't you you wouldn't know if it was like the first one or not unless you did like I did which was look it up but that also we also get the establishment in this scene of Zach jumping through the window that that that's his way of coming over to say yes, hey to Jesse. Vinny Del Pino style. Yeah, he comes through the window just like Sam on Clarissa Explains It All yes. and tells her while Slater's there that the video is going to happen, that they want yeah. him to make a music video. So she's feeling more confident about geometry, but now she's going to have to take time off because she's got to do this music video, so she's not going to have as much time to study as she thought. So she sends Slater on his way, gives him the kiss goodbye, and then immediately decides that she's going to take the pills because if she can't study tomorrow because of the music video, she's got to stay up all night. Yeah, there's not enough hours in the day. I relate. It's funny how I think coming through the window is like the universal sign of a platonic friend. You know, it's like if we're boy and girl, but... 
you know, but we're just friends, then you don't need as much privacy. You can hop in through the window. If you're a romantic suitor, you come in through the door and keep everything. That's right. Parents have to know that you're here if you're a romantic suitor. If you're just the boy next door that you grew up with, you can come through the window. Right. That's how a lot of teen pregnancies happen. Mm. So we get the video itself, full video, like three or four verses, choruses, like this is not truncated. We get Every 80s music video trick in the book. Oh, yeah. The weird superimposing, the close ups over the wide shots, the canted angles, the jump cuts where they change outfits oh, yes. mid bounce off of a trampoline. They each have their own uh, personal trampoline. This is like a hybrid music video slash jazzer size workout. It is. Thing. And they are in Jane Fonda esque workout attire. Yes. Like, they have, you know, the bike shorts with the leotard and the like the thong leotard over it so that you're not seeing anything untoward. You're just seeing like the hot pink bike shorts. Oh, yeah, they're dressed. And I mean, but it's I mean, very cute. Everybody has their own look. Um, lots of side pony and like bows mm-hmm. and everything. It's, uh, it's was very 80s, even- 90s based on like i'm looking back on it now like because um, you had like let's o- get physical okay, that's what physical. i was gonna ask olivia newton john i know she was known for like the workout stuff and the music stuff and you're saying the video for let's get physical was like that the I video don't for let's get physical is a workout video okay, yeah so it's very much like and off. that but that's not the only reference you know what i mean like there definitely were other ones that did right. that but this is straight up i mean then the song is called break a sweat or no, whatever oh, definitely and it so all fits it's, together it's, that's what the theme is for yes. the thing but as i was watching it this time i was going like oh yeah like all those music Music videos that were also workout videos. And then I'm like, wait a minute. What were there? Was that a thing? Like, I don't remember Madonna having workouts in her music video. Maybe not so much, but the um, the flash dance, She's a Maniac, that is yes. almost like a workout video. True. I mean, it's a it's a dance video, yeah. but it's similarly. And again, these are all like 80s cheesy things. We're right. in the early 90s now, but still. Yeah, no, but it's appropriate that. for this because with the workout and all the energy and like you're saying, it's a way to sort of keep them dressed modestly, but still sort of show off their hot bods like it's uh, i don't know and so yeah we get this crazy video by all means you know if you're not familiar with this you just got to watch the you know watch and enjoy (laughs) hot sunday or whatever on youtube uh and this is this is a original composition yeah i don't know your mind to it go for it thing yeah it's it's like the same five words over and over again but this isn't like i'm so excited where they're it's a pointer sister song yeah no this not that i know of i think that I i haven't heard this anywhere but here okay and so now we're back at school and this is where we start to get the overlap with stuff like welcome back cotter where you've got slater trying to consult the other friends you know telling zach what do we do here? I think Jesse is getting hooked on pills. Right, because now he does find them in her locker, right? After she said she was going to throw them away. And this is where we do get the scene that we see from like Freddie Washington and Alex P. Keaton. The like, you know, Slater, he asks if he can borrow a pencil or something. Mm-hmm. And he, she's like, oh, yeah, it's in my backpack. He reaches into her backpack and her locker and feels the pills and... Is like, uh, what the heck are these? And she's like, I believe this is what you were looking for. How dare you? You know, like, whatever. Why don't you just mind your own business? I need to stay awake and study. You know, I'm fully in control of this. You shouldn't be snooping, you know, kind of in, you know, blows him off. And he's a little like, uh, crap. What do I do? Yeah. So he tells Zach. Yeah. Who says they were probably vitamins. So Zach is full on casting himself in the role of the Arnold Horshack. We also get that there's a lot that goes on in like two minutes here, because even in between those two things in my notes, I have the manic midpoint. We have the part again, just like every other episode where Jesse is going, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Come on guys. Yeah. 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 And everyone else is like, okay, good, I guess. Yeah. Cause they go to do a rehearsal cause they're going to have a live performance at the max that night. And then also I think the geometry test is like last period or something. Yeah. She does. She takes her test. Unlike, unlike Alex. Yeah. So she takes her test 
she finishes it like right away, you know, right before she goes in for the test. She's like, yeah, everybody, I feel so ready for this. I'm so ready to go. The square, the hypotenuse and blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, just lists off the Pythagorean theorem correctly, not like the scarecrow does it incorrectly and was Ross. And she's like, I'm ready. I'm so ready. Woo. And then they have rehearsal right after school at the max and it goes well. And she does that thing of like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it's going to be great. We're going to be amazing, aren't we? Woo. And everyone's like, yeah, Jess, we're we're ready. And she's everybody goes home to shower and change. And Zach says, OK, I'll pick you up on my way. We can just ride together because, like, you know, apparently they live next door to each other. And she was like, OK, see you then. And then the next scene we get is she's asleep on her bed, not having showered, like in the same clothes from the rehearsal. And Zach jumps through the window. Yeah. Into iconic television moment. Yeah, no, I mean, this is very similar to the Alex scene. But again, she didn't miss her test. She's she's about to miss the performance. She's all groggy. And then, of course, you know, she says something. Oh, I have to get ready. I have to change or whatever. And Zach says, well, there's no time for that. And that's where she starts going. There's no time. There's never any time. There's no time to study. There's no time to learn the music. And she just starts breaking down. And again, I would say as much as we clown on it, like she's doing what she's supposed to do. And so is that good job. I know I I, like people make fun of it. And like I said, jury's out. But I was impressed that you don't expect these kids. I mean, they're in their 20s, but you don't expect people on shows like this to have the best acting chops. She did a good job. It was effective. I'm so scared. Yeah, she starts, of course, that's the most famous part. She starts saying, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And then it turns into, I'm so scared. She, you know, sort of collapses into a heap in in Zach's arms. And then I always thought Zach's comforting tack could have used another polish. He says... Remember that time when we were little kids and we were riding our bicycles home from from seeing E.T. in the movies and it was really dark? We were scared then. And that's it. Like, there's no, like, you couldn't go back and maybe come up with like, hey, remember a time where where I was I was in over my head and I didn't think I would get through it. But then you you helped me. You know, like he, he couldn't come up with something a little more substantial to connect this. All he does is just think of another time when we were scared. But I think the point is that they were together. Yeah. And that it was OK. Like he, he said, it's OK. I'm here. Remember that time. And so he's saying, like, it's OK. Like, we'll get through anything if we're together. Yeah, I think I, I could have used just one more sentence because having seen this a million times i know all he gets to is we were scared then and that's all that that's 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 his words of wisdom she misses the thing that she misses isn't the test she misses the performance for the record executives so we cut to that we right. cut to the, the performance at the max. Again, if there is ever a show, an event, or anything, everything takes place at the max. And, you know, we sort of find out in real time what their makeshift solution to Jesse's absence is, right? Because we get first, you know, they start the music, Kelly pops up from, you know, underneath the frame, and then, you know, uh, Lisa spins into the frame, and then we get Screech comes in through the front door, and he's dancing uh, badly, lip syncing to Jesse's part. Right. They were Zip, just playing lip syncing to the part that track. she would have been lip syncing to. Yeah. Right, they're just playing it from a track, and so and then Slater's like, "Sorry, we couldn't have them sing live." You know, our our uh, the girl who usually plays the you know the part that that weird guy was playing, she wasn't able to make it, had an emergency or whatever. So that's the end of Hot Sunday. Yeah, and so. They all go back and they have this sort of bedside moment where Jessie's in the bed and she's all, you know, she's in a robe and all kind of calm and, you know, recovering. And, you know, she kind of apologizes to everyone and says, oh, you know, uh, sorry, I got in over my head. She says to Slater, I wasn't very nice to you. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, this guy has never said anything except, like, sexist, misogynist bullshit. Like, he don't apologize to him. He's the least supportive person in the world. Except for he was the one that noticed that she it's was true. on drugs and tried to stop her, and she told him to fuck off. I mean, I, in a say by the well, bell fuck off way, but, you know, that's yeah, what she's referring to. I don't think she owes Slater <laughs> anything. You uh, get to be a dick to Slater in perpetuity, because he is constantly putting you down. Yeah. 
But uh, Jesse says, I have to go to counseling. I have to learn that I don't have to be the best at everything. So it's a very, you know, as is to be expected, this is, you know, the messaging is very clear. We're speaking directly to the, you know, 10 to 15 year old kids that are watching this and saying, don't take things too seriously. Not only don't do drugs, but, you know, don't succumb to the, the pressures of school and, you know, your friend slash uh, like talent manager. <laughs> Right. So now we're going to go from a show where the actors are very comfortable and confident in their roles of we are doing this show for kids, right? Mm -hmm. To a show where, well, everyone who's supposed to be in high school has sort of aged out, but they're still playing it, albeit grumpily. Uh, <laughs> that's one word for it. Uh, I'll take that to mean we are moving on to family matters. Okay, uh, that was from the Hooked on Pills episode, and now we're going to move on to the Going to College episode. We're going to have our segment from the college years, but first, uh, let's get some more quiz questions. All right, here you go. What special power does Screech get after being struck by lightning? He can, like, see the future, um, like he knows what's about to happen. Yes, he can. Finish Mit Mr. Belding's catchphrase, hey, hey, hey. What is going on here? <laughs> That's correct. What did Screech name his first zit? Oh, God. Uh, what are the choices? Benny, Murray, Milton, Humphrey. I think it's Murray. All right. Nice. The Buddy Bands commercial ends with Slater pointing to Kelly and Jesse and saying... I don't... What are the choices? Ladies love them. Hey, they work. Oh, mama. Better buy two. Better buy two? No! Uh, yeah, that doesn't... I mean, the Buddy Bands thing, of course, rings a bell, but... What were the Buddy Bands? That was their Let's Start a Business thing. A and different it's like, Let's Start a Business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Which of these doesn't happen during Student Teacher Week? Zach becomes principal. Kelly becomes a history teacher. Lisa becomes a gym teacher. Jesse becomes the counselor. Jesse becomes the counselor? That's correct. How did Lisa sprain her ankle before the dance competition at the Max? I feel like it just like, I think they just kind of mention it. Like it just happens off camera. What are the choices? Playing soccer, learning the hammer dance. She kicked the TV, trying on heels. Trying on heels, I think. I think it's just like a... Incorrect. What is it? I don't know. Doesn't yeah. tell me the right answer. In addition to a scholarship, Slater is offered a car to play football at what fictional university? San Stam Stansbury or something like that. There's a Stansbury. That's yeah. correct. What mall job does Slater get to make money around Christmas time? He's a gift wrapper. He wraps gifts. That's correct. Zach has trouble singing his entry into the school song competition because his drink was spiked with what? Uh, give me the... Vodka, Novocaine, dish soap, lemon extract. Dish soap? Incorrect. Who was Miss December in the Bayside Swim Team calendar? Mr. Belding. Mr. Belding is right. That's number 40. Way to go, babes. Let's uh... see. One... Two, three, you missed that. That was your worst round yet, Jim. Yeah, I know. That was a bummer. This last segment is from our Going to College episode. This was where we had the kids from the Hogan family stealing the mascot. We had Alex P. Keaton again. He met Alex P. Keaton and Will Smith both met professors that they looked up to, but challenged them beyond their capabilities. And uh, Zach was no different. This was where you, you get to hear me talk all about Patrick Fabian and my love for him. Uh, yeah, going to college. Here you go. Season one, episode three, Zach Lies and Videotape. Yeah, so I definitely remember... When the students of Bayside High graduated, the prime time Saved by the Bell uh, experience. I was excited for this. Yeah. And then I remember Saved by the Bell, the college years happening. Doug, where were you? What is your Saved by the Bell experience? 
All right. Again, I feel bad. I feel like <laughs> Saved by the Bell was something everyone I knew watched. I didn't watch it. I really didn't. I've seen it enough in syndication to know what sure. it is or what it was. I knew that Saved by the Bell, the college years, was a thing that existed and that Bob Golick was in it. But this is the first time I watched it. I was like, this is a disaster. That is your in? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> you were into sports, right? That guy? Yeah. Well, I wasn't. I mean, I knew enough about sports to know who Bob Golick was. And even in my stupid brain, like when he showed up, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I knew he was. Why did I know he was in this? Like, I, I forgot about it. But no, I've never seen this before. I'd never seen this show. I knew it but was. That track. I will say, but I did. I tuned in when this started and I probably watched it for as long as it was on. But it was very clear that the magic was gone and oh, that yeah. this transition. This one season. Yeah. They were trying to pull off a transition from a Saturday morning show that was basically you know an aspirational show for tweens for young teenagers yeah. or children to see high school kids you know just sure. like the welcome freshmen or something and so now to try to have that be an actual legit prime time show that is going to be like you know for all of america to tune in and watch and yeah, like it just doesn't have the the quality, like the you know yeah. the comedy. Well, it, it not only does it not have the comedy, but it just doesn't have the stories, right? Like think about the other kind of college age, like these age kids that were on shows. That kids they're mentioning, like they name drop nine hundred two one zero, right? Luke Perry, Tori Spelling. Right. They name drop River Phoenix, who by the way dies like a month after the I episode. <laughs> like, I had I to look like, that up. I was like, oh <laughs> wow. The one thing I want to call out about Saved by the Bell, the college years. Uh, one of the many things that are vastly inferior to the original is the theme song, right? If you know nothing about Saved by the Bell, you know the iconic right. theme song, right? You wake up in the morning, your alarm gives out a warning, everybody knows that. The 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 graphics that look like a shirt that Vinny Del Pino would wear with the little <laughs> clip art things floating around there. And so they're like, all right, well, we need we need something new for the college years. Let's make a song called Standing at the Edge of Tomorrow. Standing at the Edge of Tomorrow. Like, is there a okay. chance this was sung by the California Dreams? Is there a chance? Oh, that man. That... <laughs> no. The California Dreams are spinning in their graves. <laughs> <laughs> They're I, Nielsen graves. I, <laughs> this is butt rock in the worst <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Way. What is it? That That is what a friend of mine used to describe their <laughs> music with. And it, it, yeah. Butt Just rock butt has rock. never butt rock yeah. fart rock. <laughs> Yeah, and this whole and the same thing with the visuals in this, all of the dumb '90s filters and and color distortions and everything. Like it's just, I don't know, it was just such a bummer, and it just right. totally distills. Like we have learned nothing. Like <laughs> we made this show that was dumb, but people loved it. Now we're gonna find a way to somehow make it still be dumb, but take away everything that people liked it and make it different in ways that are all bad. Now, here's what I'll say about our professor that we're going to get in this episode. Yummy. We're going to have... His hair is uh, amazing. Oh, and yeah. he knows it too. Okay. So, How many yes. times did he run his hands through it? Yeah. The beginning of every line. This is Professor Lasky, played by Patrick Fabian, who technically I have worked with because oh. I did the animation for the Better Call Saul web series. And Patrick okay. Fabian yeah. now plays Howard Hamlin on Better Call Saul, which is an amazing role for Ooh, him. Oh, he's Silver Foxy now. I remember responding to this actor at this time and then i remember he showed up in the 2000s in the movie the last exorcist and he it's it's like a a faux documentary like a found footage movie about like a charlatan oh, exorcist like that. a fake yeah. priest and it turns out to be real and it's a pretty yep. good movie for that kind of thing and he's i he was really good in that and i remember noticing oh that's the professor guy from saved by the bell i really liked him and 
then, yeah, he popped up again in this pretty major part in Better Call Saul uh, throughout the whole series. And so, yeah, I really love this actor and he just totally nails the cheesy, I'm a grown up, but I'm still cool vibe that they're going for. Oh, yeah. He's trying way yeah. too hard to be friends with Zach. Well, friends, yeah, and, it's and Why would you want to be friends with Zach, too? Right? No, I, I swear. It's like he sees this guy that is has his hair and he's like, oh, I know this kid. I'm going to get this kid on my side. So the the episode starts and they're in this class and he is the professor sitting in the audience. He's incognito. Right. He's not letting on that he's the professor. Totally chilling in the back of the class with Zach. And he's like, oh man, you know, this guy here, this class is crazy. And Zach's like, oh yeah, well, whatever. And he's like, yeah, getting up so early. It's so hard. You know, I've got the midterm. You want it? 20 bucks. He's like, I usually sell it for 50. And uh, and Zach's like, hell yeah. Like, first of all, Zach, you're stupid. Who the fuck is this guy? You don't even know who this really guy is stupid Se- second of all this professor seriously like okay if this was part of an anthropological study and that you used that interaction to like talk about the machinations of the like surfer dude college guy okay maybe but no he just gets up and he's like hey some people think they can buy the uh, midterms and then professor lasky this is the class and the only redeeming quality about him is that he's hot (laughs) that's it (laughs) yeah no that's it he's he's running around the class jumping on his desk and again like you kind of said if he was there teaching them anything if any of this if at the end of the episode anything made sense or i or i had an idea that somebody learned something it might justify this character a little more but no he's just super hot and this is just i I still don't understand what zach is submitting at the end and what that's supposed to teach him or anyone about anything i put forth that the reason Lasky wants Zach to go around and interview women to figure out what women really want is so that this professor can have a reason to have a videotape full of all of the <laughs> college girls that are running around campus so he can be like, what yep. does this woman want? What does this woman want? It is Mel Gibson in that movie when the women, like what women want, where the women talk right. in his head. Yeah. I think within the world of the show... Gross. I get, look, I get why you get that vibe, but I think within the world of the show, he is supposed to be a benevolent guy that's not up to that. Although there is going to be an episode where Kelly has the hots for him, at least. Maybe even, maybe it's even like consummated. I don't remember exactly where that goes. So I'm not trying to say you're totally off base with that, but I do feel the need to defend Professor Lasky. I feel like we are supposed to experience him as yeah, primarily a think cool guy he's who's, cool. who's right. not going to bang the, the right, female but students. Right, but that's what I'm saying, which is right. if this is a show for teens, I think that's dangerous because if you get a, a folksy, overly friendly authority figure, that person is very likely trying to groom you. Yeah, look, <laughs> this guy and definitely yeah. the guy in the next show are pretty insufferable but i will say like i had cool funny professors that had that were the real life version of what this is a very lame caricature of that did engage everybody and i'm sure the female students had crushes on them. oh yeah and i'm gonna say like thinking back because i did watch this show when i was like 12 or 13 when it came on and i did not have any of these reactions. It did. Lasky did exactly what he was supposed to do. Charm the pants off of me. And I thought he was great. And we so. should say the girl characters are all there. Like the three girl oh, cast members and over it. are all, yeah, in the front row, all adjacent to each other, creaming their shorts, just <laughs> like looking at the back. Yeah. Just like, it's just, yeah. it's just such a bizarre, like, 
They're all taking class together, except for Screech, right? He's not there. Well, yeah. So let's no, talk he, about this Screech for a second. Screech is there. He's up. He's oh, in, he a in the class further too? row. Yeah. He's oh next God. to So Slater. now we've got oh. Jesse and Lisa are the only two original <laughs> cast members who aren't there. Mm. Kelly wasn't there at first for the pilot, and then she came back on board. So we're building on this trope of not only is the sitcom character going to the local school, now we're having... Everyone, we're having the whole right. friend yeah. group from high school all matriculating. Well, nearly together. all of them. And, you know, to their credit, though, Jesse got into Stanford, right? So she is gone. Right. She got into showgirls her. in real life. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Lark Voorhees and Berkeley aren't there. But yeah, like we said, the four of them are. So that's just another fun trope to track. And of course, look, Saved by the Bell, the college years, we should just call it out, is a bizarre creature in and of itself i mean there's no other thing that's really like this a show that's just the college years where we took another no. show and started a whole new show that's a spin-off but it's the same people and just now they're in college you well know. you've got the golden palace yeah fair enough fair enough you went from girls to palace <laughs> that's sort of yep, the same. they went from hanging out at home to now they own a hotel so look, <laughs> Professor Lasky, the reason why we find his teachings so weird is because he is... Because we're old and jaded now. <laughs> no, it's because it's fully this trope of the class is just going to be whatever we want the show to be about, right? right? right. So of course, right. yeah. his quote-unquote anthropology class is dating class. Yeah. It's all about yeah. courting rituals. He has them get up and role-play courtship quote unquote which is just like hey Zach and Leslie Leslie was going to be the new Kelly and then Kelly came back and so now they have two hot girls that that Zach has a will they won't they with so he's just like I was yeah, I Zach. was really wondering cuz I was like how what is this character like what is she supposed to be She's just and supposed that, to be the smart, straight-edged girl that he's going to wow. try to okay. wear her down and romance her. This was a case, I think, of the pilot being oh. shot separately, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because uh, sometimes some places okay. have the pilot as episode zero. Mm -hmm. And so I think right, it was one right. of these, like... Like we see all the time now getting into these shows, the second episode is sort of the first episode. Yeah, like it's like they've retooled, retooled things, the set looks different, the cast is a little different. So yeah, so we have two female leads mm -hmm. now, Leslie and Kelly. And so yeah, Professor Lasky's class is Zach hit on Leslie and like we'll all watch, basically. Yeah. And right? he's, he's like He's providing commentary, too, through the whole thing, where he's like, well, now she's crossing her arms. Clearly, the female is not interested. I would be so creeped out if I yeah, was, was so creepy. And this is the stuff, like, honestly, uh, like, maybe I shouldn't admit this, but, like, I've listened to podcasts and stuff where those dudes, like, sort of break down, like, the science yeah. of, like, talking to girls and everything. And, yeah, oh, body language and that's whatnot. so weird. And that, look. How'd that work for you, hon? Like, very great. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it's anthropological, sure, but like, is that what you should be teaching on day one of an well, anthropology class? But that's also class? not the way you do it. Like, your case study can't be kids standing up in front of the class role playing. Like, your case study needs to be a real case study. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to learn anything from my sitcom college episodes. But I took anthropology in college. None of this was discussed. Like, there's, there's no <laughs> way anything that is talked about in this guy's class would be discussed in a real class. And I also feel really bad saying that this is the kind of teacher I am. I just meant that I'm an idiot goofball, and I tell <laughs> jokes that my students do not laugh at and are not entertained by. And I take so you're everything more like the way guy from Fresh Prince with all of his I am impressions. Not, I do not do... I'm not doing you impressions. Ever I am not first... doing impressions. That's the reason I chose this guy. <laughs> you what can't handle the truth. Do you, do you... On the first day of school, do you sit amongst the kids and see if anyone believes you to be... No. A... So this is another case of like... 
Zach decides that he doesn't want to take the class anymore. Right. right? He's well, like, he's been right, singled yeah. out, right? He had, they made like, he felt like he was made a fool out of by, um, having Kinda to be like the Alex. one. Yeah. By having to be the one that was like in this case study in front of everybody. And it was, it was very awkward and embarrassing. And I would be mad if I was Zach in yeah. that situation too. Like, that's not okay. Like that was totally uncomfortable and not fun. Um, and you didn't learn anything from it. It was like a waste of time. So he's like, you know what? I don't want to be in this class. I don't want to get up at 8 a.m. I don't want to like, mm-hmm. this is stupid. And the teacher is like, um, the professor's like, well, hey, if, if you want to never come to class again uh, and I'll give you a B, but you have to go around and you have to, you have to do an anth- anthropological study. Yeah. This and is all like in Lasky's private office. This is like that a little he private sleeps conversation in. that they, that have. he's sleeping in. Yes. It looks like his apartment. All There's part a, of his young cool He's got guy. a bed out. Because he in his office. Yeah. his time. Right. That he's sleeping with students in. Exactly. That's the, right. Yeah. There's and and even just to So many red flags. <laughs> I'm sure they did not mean it to be that way when they made this show, but instantly I was like, well, this seems wildly inappropriate to be in this sitcom. Yeah, it does. What is his, what is his other thing? He splits his time between that Uh, and the van at the the beach. beach. Yeah. Yeah. He lives in a van at the beach on the weekends, but during the week he sleeps in his office. Summer school. Upstanding citizen. He's like Chris Farley from (laughs) van down by the river. Exactly. Yeah. So he has this, so, yeah, proposal that exactly. is sitcom as hell. Find out yeah. what women want. Yeah. He says specifically, he goes like, Zach, I think that your problem is you don't know anything about women. And Zach yeah, goes. Yeah, because that's your problem with not doing well in my class is that you don't know anything about women. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and Zach exactly. says, yes. and I quote, I've been scoping chicks since I was in the third oh, grade. That's so creepy. And then he gets yeah. like a standing ovation from the audience. He does. <laughs> I am shocked that these two like didn't high five at the end of the episode or something. I like, mean, they that's basically how close did. This is yeah, yeah. When he offers to what film the girls' volleyball team for him or something? Oh, he's like, I. Are you sure you don't want the girls' swim yeah. team footage? Yeah. Swim well, and he's going to proceed to pull that maneuver. But yeah, as Lasky explains, I will give you a you know a free b in the class you don't have to show up to the early classes right. or whatever all you have to do is make me a video essay in which you address the question what do women want yeah what like, do women really want what the hell <laughs> it's just such what? a strange assignment i i really enjoyed um zach's reaction to this because the fact that he's like you got it man and left and i was like no follow-up questions for me. None <laughs> no. at all. Like, you totally know what the assignment is and what he's looking for because I'm confused watching this show. I That's have no they're the idea same what you're going to go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Zach does, he's right back to his old tricks. This is, you know, one of his go-to maneuvers whenever there's a female sleepover happening is to physically <laughs> penetrate the premises. Whoa, and just, penetrate. Whoa. And just sneak around the couch you know <laughs> hide under the bed or whatever and yeah he's filming them secretly like that's going to be his anthropology for yes well first he goes and just is like hitting on women and trying to be like what do you yeah. want do you want of this do you want of that and yeah. screech keeps making comments and it's like blowing his chances but he gets like 18 girls numbers that's the right. the thing that he gets and, and, and that's then- that's the other thing that i can't I can't buy as a comedic bit or whatever they're trying to do here when he's like, this is really helping me get girls numbers. I'm like, you're an early 90s Mark Paul Gosler. You don't need help getting girls numbers. Well, that's numbers. the funny thing. That time and time again, that's what I say about Barney and How I Met Your Mother. All these guys, they're good looking, sure. extroverted, successful people. Like they don't need to pretend right. to be yeah. an astronaut from Mars <laughs> to get no, women to sleep with No, but it's the fun them. of it. Yeah, it's because they are sociopaths and they enjoy <laughs> tricking people. Uh, that yes, yeah, that's that's part of the appeal. Uh, so yeah, it, it's lots of that. 
And then, yeah, we get the aforementioned sleepover. I guess it's not a sleepover anymore if you live together. In yeah, a dorm it's just room. the girls hanging out in the but, dorm. Yeah, room. he's sneaking around. He's, you know, at least they have the, you know, this is in the real world enough to have the girls discover him pretty quickly and right. dump their popcorn on him over the side of the couch when they see him sneaking around. And then um, he, what, how, what kind of turns the tide, right? When he's like, he's talking to them and he's like well, nobody will give me a real interview and, and yeah. they're like that's because you're just yeah. hitting on everyone and Kelly is like he turns on a dime Kelly is like Zach oh. you never really yeah. listen you never really ask anybody about anything you're not interested in people and Zach's like well I'm interested in you what do you want to do with your life? And for apparently the first time in their like 12 year relationship, he learns I that she's interested in healthcare. I couldn't believe it. I, I love that you brought that up because that was the most shocking thing about this episode. I'm like, how have you not had this same conversation at least a dozen times? <laughs> You've yeah. been friends since you were nine. Just basic right. things yeah. like what you want to do when you grow up. And yeah, he really, he doesn't take any other prodding than that he just it it is just like it never crossed his mind to ask her a question right and then as she starts answering he's like he like goes over and grabs the camera and like points it mm. at her but like isn't looking at it exactly and then she's just because it's kelly and she's comfortable with him she's talking and then the other girls come in and like the one girl she's gonna be an actress alex is you know studying to be an actress so he's like do you mind the camera and she's like no the camera loves me and then and the other girl, Leslie, comes in and, and he's like, you know, is it OK with the camera? And she's like, it, it's all right. Just like, don't put it right in my face, you know? <laughs> yeah. And he continues getting his his answers. They all start talking about like guys always have a hidden agenda or whatever. And so we, we see this sort of transition into like now Zach has learned how to film women <laughs> saying their their feelings. <laughs> Yeah, because what women really want is to sit around and talk about guys. Yeah, yes. His film That's is what I learned to pass the from this. Obvi. What he realizes at the end of the episode when he talks to the teacher, this was shocking to me, is the revelation when he's like, I guess girls are just kind of like us guys. You know, and I was like, Ooh. oh, you found out that women are human beings like yeah, this, this is man, so terrible. This man who has had great girlfriends for yeah. years. Right. Yeah. Like he's the one that held Jesse when she was like in her crazed out, you know, whacked mm -hmm. out speed pills moments. Right. Like he was the best friend that was there for her. Same with Lisa Turtle. He was like the best friend. So it's like, yeah, yeah he's always had these scams and things going on. But you have been in a in a a really cohesive co-ed friend group for a long time. Like, yes, you're you have what? Like, you have to be able to, like, know that girls right. are people. It I is a little bit of that how I met your mother thing we talk about where there's like this weird bifurcation between like the girls that are his friends are right. just like he sees them as people, right. but they're not girls. And so, like, I guess Professor Lasky is helping him, like, break down that barrier or something. The one, the one beat that is a little different and is still very, very staid is the, um, you know, Professor Lasky. Zach has turned in his video essay. He's gotten his B. He's offered the swim team footage for an A. He's been turned down. And, you know, le now it's the next day in class class and yep. Lasky it's like four minutes yeah. after eight and he, he's sitting on his desk and he hasn't started class yet and he looks up at the clock and then the camera cuts back to him and he's got this sort of pensive like ah well I tried look and he goes well I guess we're going to start class because everybody that's going to be here is here and he yeah. goes to start class all disappointed in his heart that Zach didn't show up anyway because he reached him <laughs> and then you know and, and then class starts and off he goes and then in comes Zach and and he stops class like none of the rest of these students matter only Zach matters no, and no, he no. walks right. to the back of the class in this auditorium hall, lecture hall when Zach walks in and he's like you came oh well like, and Zach has to announce himself with a joke 
Like, Zach can't just walk in the back door. He yeah. has to say, oh, because the cavemen didn't have cable TV. Whatever, I'm here. Whatever. Th- yeah, that's, that's how Zach Morris walks into a room. Yeah. So the heroes welcome and the two, you know, most narcissistic, best hair gents at Cal U are, uh, have a little happy bro reunion and then anthropology can start and everybody can start to learn, I guess. I do like imagining the other students in the class being right? like, who is this asshole? Like, right? what is, like, why what is, is going on? I thought we were done with him. I thought we were <laughs> done with him constantly interrupting the professor, but now he's back. And then I just want to say that this episode ends, right? We have had precious little of our Zach addressing the camera that used to be a big oh. thing on the original save by yeah. and it's so weird when it happens in this it's yeah it was so weird i didn't like it he says stick around it's going to be an interesting year so okay any uh, have we reached the end of save by the bell any final save by the bell thoughts ring the bell all right ring. moving on to maybe a lot All right, that was from the Going to College episode. We're going to wrap things up here, but first, let's finish our quiz. All right. How is beloved Bayside duck Becky killed? Oil. Oil spill. She drowns in oil. That's right. How did Zach injure his knee before the big basketball game? Oh, um... I need the choices. He wrecked his car. He was hit by a motorcycle. He tore his ACL after landing awkwardly in practice, or he bumped into Mr. Belding. The car thing. I think that was one of the cars. No, boo. I don't know what the right answer is, though. Where does Jesse's dad get married? It's, um, give me the choices. Reno, Palm Springs, Las Vegas, Acapulco, Acapulco. It's Palm Springs. Where does Lisa's dad want to take her after she admits to overspending on his credit card? Where does he want to take her? Mm-hmm. Burger King, Sizzler, The Max, or Denny's? Uh, Sizzler? That is correct. Which of the following does Screech not appear as in a dream sequence? Robin Screech, Robo Screech, Geraldo Screech, Jean-Claude Van Screech. The last one. He is not Jean-Claude Van Screech. That is correct. What's the name of Kelly's hunky older boyfriend? Uh, Jeff. That's correct. Jesse subverts the Miss Liberty beauty pageant by wearing what? It's all, she wears something that like you can't see. It's like a judge's robe or something. What are the choices? Statue of Liberty costume, a three-piece suit, a burka, nothing at all. The Statue of Liberty thing? Yes. What did Screech say his name was when dressed as a female janitor to invade the girls' locker room? Sinead O'Connor, In the episode that we just recapped. What place did Zach and Kelly's song occupy on the Max's jukebox? Oh, like the number? I don't remember. A6, A12, A18, or A24? A12. I was kind of hoping it was A24, just because like that. That's what the movie studio was named after. That's what the movie studio was named after. But it is A12. You are correct. That's a crazy random one to get right. And you closed it out with a bang. I think you went a total of 40 to 10. Nice job. Yeah. Yeah. Could have Disappointed, been I know. Could I know. have been better. Some of those, some of those, eighty percent, eighty percent unforced shit. errors. So yeah, look, Saved by the Bell. Like I've said, I've always loved it. Of the ones we've covered so so far, the house party, the spaghetti sauce thing, the hooked on pills, the college ones. Do you have any overall? Is there one that stands out to you as it was your I favorite really, uh, of the well? Of the ones that we've covered or of all of them ever? Like, my favorite all of all of them ever, I loved those summer mm. with Leah Remini. I thought she was so funny and spicy and she just right, brought so something interesting. we should interesting. do one of those for a beach. Yeah, thing. that would be a good idea. Yeah, and, and I forget more about Saved by the Bell than I think I remember. So when we do quizzes like this, I'm like, oh, yeah, I kind of remember that one. I want to go back and watch that. I... 
always loved the sprain, the dance, the sprain. So yeah. happy to get that in at any time. These are all great. I don't, you know, the hooked on pills one obviously is the most famous one, but the screeches spaghetti sauce has so much going on there. And that house party one, the crazy plot twist, like it all started because they lost money to Oh, right, where they're Max trying to... In the, Max Nerdstrom in <laughs> yeah, the poker game. Yeah, the mean boyfriend. And the, <laughs> yeah, they, they lose the dog. Yeah, like it, it's just so strange. So yeah, Saved by the Bell, there's nothing like it. It is what it is. And yeah, so much for the mixtape. We'll be back with a new episode next week. And until then, we will consider this segment of the sitcom study concluded. Thank you for listening to The Sitcom Study. Tell us what you think or share your own TV tropes and topic ideas by sending a self-addressed stamped email to sitcomstudypodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook or Instagram. And if you like the show, consider leaving a rating or review on your podcast app. It helps us boost those precious Nielsen ratings. The Sitcom Study is recorded in front of a live studio dog. Studio dog.